Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about urine anion gap versus urine osmolal gap and its use in non anion gap metabolic acidosis and try to figure out which one is better. Before we do that, let's understand how kidneys handle acid. Normally, around 4000 milliequivalents of sodium bicarb is filtered every day and most of it is reabsorbed. You also have around 50 to 100 milliequivalents of non volatile acid that are produced in your body that needs to be removed. To get rid of these extra non-volatile acid, your body uses two methods, ammonia and titratable acids like phosphoric acid to get rid of your hydrogen ions. In a mathematical form, your net acid excretion is nothing but amount of ammonia plus amount of titratable acid and subtracting amount of bicarb that is lost in the urine. Since there's hardly any loss of bicarb in the urine, that's approximately zero. So you can already see that your net acid excretion is nothing but sum of ammonium and titratable acids. If you've got a worsening acidosis, your body can produce an ammonia by tenfold. Ammonia is obtained from your amino acid glutamine, which forms two bicarb and ammonia. Bicarb is reabsorbed and helps bicarb regeneration. The ammonia that is produced makes its way to the distal convoluted tubule, where it combines with hydrogen ions to form ammonium ions and is trapped inside the tubules and is excreted out. Around 40% of ammonia is reabsorbed and goes into the urea cycle and generates two hydrogen ions. And you can see that this is a waste because those two hydrogen ions will be used by that two bicarb ions that were generated in the first place. So what your kidneys do is it tries to increase the urine and renal ammonium partitioning so that it decreases the amount of ammonia absorption from 40% to 20%. It also decreases your ammonia consumption for urea synthesis. And lastly, it can increase the triterable acid excretion about three folds. So ammonia production is the main pathway that your body gets rid of your hydrogen ions. Urine ion gap and urine osmolal gap attempt to differentiate the etiologies which produce enough ammonia versus those who don't. And looking at this etiology diagram, you can see that if you have renal causes, you will have impaired renal ammonia excretion. So using either of the methods can help you differentiate renal versus extra renal causes for non anion gap acidosis. Urine ion gap is your difference between sum of sodium and potassium in the urine and you subtract the chloride from it. And when you do that, you have a urine anion gap and this urine anion gap approximates to your ammonia production. If you look closely, urine anion gap actually represents how much extra chloride you have in comparison with sodium and potassium. And you're assuming that this extra chloride has got an ammonium counterpart. So urine ion gap in a way represents amount of ammonia indirectly. As your acidosis worsens and your kidney starts making more ammonium ion, your urine ion gap is going to decrease and urine ion gap between minus 30 to minus 50 means great ammonia production and that would suggest extra renal causes. Sometimes RTA type 2 can present like this. If your ammonia production decreases, your urine ion gap will increase. That means kidneys are not making enough ammonium ion and any urine ion gap more than zero will suggest defect in ammonia production and is seen in renal diseases and RTA type 1 and 4. This is a little bit counterintuitive to remember because of the negative sign. So as your urine ion gap decreases, that actually means you have got great ammonium production. And if your urine ion gap increases, that means you have a defect in ammonium production. And since medical board loves it and asks regularly about this question, try to remember this. There are few limitations of urine ion gap, which you need to know. First of them is polyuria, meaning to say that if you make a lot of diluted urine, your urine ion gap will falsely look higher and look more renal etiology. However, it is not. One of the other concepts is your presence of sodium in your distal convoluted tubule increases your hydrogen excretion. So as you absorb sodium in your DCT, you generate negative intraluminal charges and your hydrogen ions can be excreted. And these hydrogen ions will combine with your ammonia to form ammonium and they'll be excreted in the urine. So if you do not have enough sodium ion in your DCT, it reduces your hydrogen excretion. So it would appear that you have got reduced ammonia production while your kidneys are doing their best job to make that ammonia. 
ammonia is simply reabsorbed in your bloodstream. And this is commonly seen because in prenatal state you have low urine sodium. So you have a positive looking urine anion gap which can be misleading. Lastly, presence of filtered anions can be a cause of problem as well. You can see on your figure on the right that your urine anion gap looks positive and it would appear that it is from the renal causes. However, if you look more closely, there is presence of other acid in your negative charges that are reducing the amount of chloride. So making your urine and gap positive. So even if your kidneys are working normally, you might see a positive looking urine and gap. Urine osmolal gap in non-nine gap acidosis is much simpler to use. Calculated urine osmolality is similar to your calculated serum osmolality that is two times sodium plus potassium plus glucose by 18 plus BUN by 28. And if you subtract this from measured urine osmolality, you will get the amount of ammonium ions. So this is your urine osmolal gap, which ranges between 10 to 100 milliosmoles per kg. And this is equal to amount of ammonia in the urine. Since ammonium has to be exuded along with a negative ion, amount of ammonium will be around 50% of this urine osmolal gap. If your ammonium ion increases, you will have increased urine osmolal gap. That means if your urine osmolal gap is more than 150, there is an extra renal cause for your acidosis. If your ammonium ion decreases, you have decreased urine osmolal gap. So if your urine osmolal gap is less than 50, that means you have renal causes. One of the main limitations of using urine osmolal gap is unmeasured osmotic molecules like alcohol and mannitol. Also, glucose is not usually measured quantitatively in the urine, so that can go unnoticed as well. So in these cases, your measured urine osmolality will be much higher because of this and it would appear that your ammonia production has increased and you will be drawing a wrong conclusion like this seems like an extra renal cause but in fact your ammonia production has not increased. A common limitation to both methods is the presence of urea splitting organisms which make ammonia therefore can increase its concentration falsely for example in UTI with proteus. Also in patients with bladder pouches reconstruction with GI tract, for example, ileal conduit or jejunal conduit, these portions can absorb ammonia and can make your ammonia appear falsely low. So I think that urine osmolal gap in non-anion gap acidosis makes more sense because it's easier to remember and has less limitations. Let me know what you guys think about it in your comment section below. These are the references. Thank you.